Morgan handing off the clean cutter tool. Now that a tether is attached to the caps, they can cut the caps without them floating away. This clean cutter will allow a uh, very even clean cut around the tubes without any bending of the tube itself to allow good flow of carbon dioxide for the cooling of alpha magnetic spectrometer. Okay, Drew, we are going to grab an inventory on that bag just to double check. You probably got okay, time now while well, Luke is clean cutting if you want. Well, let's say we just we just inventory bag three. I'm suggesting that we wait, and I, I was asking if we need to do it after I re, uh, get these two plugs and caps. Yeah. So if if you basically drew, you can do it as if you inventory it, then keep it under control while you just add the two caps. That's considered an inventory complete. But since everything got let out of the bag, then we are going to do a full inventory. But we're happy waiting until we get the caps in there, and we're doing good on timeline, so we'll have the time for the inventory. Next for you, Drew, is tape. And actually, the other thing I need from you, Drew, is a glove and half check. Okay. Half is dry. And I... Uh, oops, no change. Intact. And... Oh, I got it back now. All right. Uh, okay. Two, four... Or cap... Cap two is, is uh, retained on the adjustable... Do you want me to catch number four as well before I straighten them? Yes, that's the technique. But if you have another way you want to do it, Luca, there's no problem. But that's what we were planning to do. Okay, now let's do that right. I need to straighten that again, Drew. Oh, yeah, we're watching it, sorry. The uh, clean cutter, right? Sorry, the clean cutter, yes. Yeah. So the only thing here is got to make sure we... It's not super critical, but we want to not mix up these tubes, Luca. Once we clean cut it, we're not going to have any indicator of what's what. Yeah, Luca, I, I almost want to do it standard, uh, Jeremy. There's no issue with that. However, what we did notice in training was that when you try to clean cut with the AAF attached to that other tube, it, it can be quite cumbersome. And as we know, we can back out of, if we do swap out the tubes, we can back out of it by some changes in the pump box. Okay, we got one more idea, Luca. What if you want to straighten and tape you can do that before you uh, swage if you want to mark the tube. That's a good idea, and then we'll have a serial number to correlate. All right. Yeah. All right, so uh, well, let's take the uh, clean cutter off the tube for. Uh, actually, why? I like uh, you there. Okay, and you have the tube straightener with you. Yeah. We're seeing you right now. So right now, Parmitano working to uh, straighten and measure the tube. He'll mark that tube with tape so that they don't lose track of which tube is which. 
the bottom being tube number four, or the bottom being tube, tube number two and the top being tube number four. Once they're marked, uh, Parmitano will complete the clean cutting of tube number four, and then they'll attach the alternate fittings to complete the swaging or the connection of the tubes to the new pump system. Yeah. All the way to the window? Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 So, Luga, this one's uh, serial number. That we're putting on Q2, the serial number 13. And I think uh, this one goes out to all the flight control teams that have been sitting console for these uh, EVAs. Yeah, right. Right. Okay, number two, tube number two. Tube number 13. Three. Okay, Luca. Weed, if you can help us keep that, keep track of that. We got it. Tube number two has been successfully marked with the tape. Each of the pieces of tape are marked with a serial number. And each of the serial numbers are associated with members of the team who contributed to the hard work going into today's spacewalk and the whole series of spacewalks dedicated to the repair of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Four. With tube number two marked successfully, Parmitana will move on to clean cutting tube number four. Nah, but you got it. You're way ahead of me. Well, I'll close your eyes with these bricks. Um, or the left side of your helmet has a little bit of contact. Yeah. Uh, two and four to me, and we should be complete with the clean cutter. Yeah, two and four to me, rather. Hey, to Luca, let's go ahead and finish tube two. You can verify the tape with a straightener, and then we'll put the AAF on. Four, I straight in tube four. That's just our preference. If you have a strong feeling, let us know. Well, I think, you know, straight in this tube with the once, it's co once the number two is connected, it's going to be just as hard as cutting it. Okay. Yeah, we'll go with it. Keep your
going. You're good. Be careful not to mess with number two. So that's it for the clean cutter doing its job successfully cutting all eight tubes. Now Parmitana working to straighten and to measure tube number four. He'll mark it with some tape and then finish up the swaging for the last two of eight tubes. Swaging being the connection of these tubes, pinching them together to allow the flow of carbon dioxide through the cooling system. And through the window, yeah. Nice weren't nearly as uh, okay. onerous as we yeah. thought they might be. Good job, Luca. <sighs> right. Um, Luca, this one, is this a uh, good-looking one here, 17. And uh, this one's for the, uh, the AMS team that has been working on this for the last four years. Yeah. Okay, 17 is tube number four. Okay, 17, Luca. All the AMS teams. Okay. You can take the stream here. Yeah. Uh, Hang on, Luca. Double check that before you give that back, Luca. All Luke. right. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the outside. Okay, number two is on the edge, and number four is also right on the edge. Okay, and just keep that straightener, so we'll double check it once more before we do four, Luca. There's no harm in being sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're starting with AF number two. I have Bravo 7 for AF2. Okay, it's a good number. Your go to insert it should be uh, tape 13 going to tube 2. 13, I tube uh, 2. Yep, and I can confirm as well. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, I managed to push it uh, all the way about a little, ball, little over a quarter of an inch from the VLI, but definitely way past the black line. Okay, that's good, Luca. Okay. Double check the number and then swage it. Actually, I have uh, Bravo 7. I have Bravo 7. Okay. All right. One turn on that. Keep an eye on the tape. Keep an eye on the tape. The tape ain't going to move. Okay, I have good rotation, no motion on the tape. Going for Bravo 7. Bravo 7, I have a good pull pass. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, yeah, good pull pass. The strength, the uh, mylar is kind of slippery. And then uh, going for uh, DLI, I think. Yep. You got everyone's attention there with that call. You are go to tighten the VLI. Cycle the cap. 
Look, I'm ready with a camera. You feel like I could uh, check and okay, make sure. And Luca, just make sure on that VLI you tighten it to a high torque value by hand. When I say when I say it's tight, it's as tight as I can get it. Uh, really. Yeah, no problem. I, I don't know what torque you expect. It's uh, no, it's just sometimes when we're watching in the WVS, we just can't tell how much effort you're putting into it, and we just want to double check. We trust you. Copy. It's uh, as much as I can. Yeah, no, that's good. And I think you got the close up photos, so you can cover it up. And we'll move on to four. This is Mission Control Houston uh, switching over from satellites, the tracking and data relay satellites that provide video and audio communication, regaining some of the audio communication now. The seventh of eight tubes now swaged or connected to the new pump system. Parmitano now working on that last one. He needs to go back and remove the cap from the alternate fitting before actually putting the tube into the alternate fitting. For the, for the, for the plug. plug. Press the plug. Tube number four will be the final tube to swage or connect. Um, let's pull let's pull it back a little bit and then rotate it. And go visor up and go down.
Amitano and Morgan working together to remove the cover from that final tube. Underneath the cover is that alternate fitting that'll eventually be mated to the tube which has uh, already been cut. Tube number four, that's the last tube in this series of eight. In the meantime, the space station itself, 263 statute miles over the eastern border of Ukraine, entering into an orbital nighttime. Sort of function going on here. So what we have done on that one, Drew, is uh, put the shove the tube straightener down there um, as well, to, or the wrench actually. Wrench is the other uh, tool we've used. You just put it, push it down to the MLI, pass the AAF, and sometimes helps that go. There's like a, uh, is that this log? Still getting. Turn it, toward, turn it toward me while you do that. Let's see if it looks old. Yeah, we got a big bunch up there. Yeah. I'm not even able to get the wrench past it. It's almost like there's a blind pouch. Yeah, let me let me try. From, from up here. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. There's some stuff on stuff, but even the ranch is not going in. Let's, um, let's back it all the way. I'll give it all the slack. Is it moving freely at, after that point? It's trying now. Okay. You, 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 you keep the tension. No, 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 keep the tension. Yeah, we're making it. Doing that. There we go. There it goes. All right. Now we can put red. Hey, there's a red on the plug. All Keep right. The wrench back to you. Yeah, we can let go. And with a little teamwork, exposing that uh, alternate fitting that will eventually be mated to the tube, which has already been clean cut and is ready. What do you got for numbers, Luca? Numbers, I have Echo 8. Echo 8 is good. And I see the double line on... Okay, those are both good, Luca. All right, I see you using the wrench to stabilize it. You can open the VLI. VLI is the visual leak indicator. will be used on the next spacewalk to check all of the tubes and make sure that carbon dioxide is flowing nicely through all of the tubes and that they're successfully swaged or connected. The swaging process is uh, using that wrench to turn the bolt that's on the inside of that alternate fitting and pinch the tubes that have been cut to mate them to the new pump system. And uh, got it um, staged on the diagonal hand beam. Plug it up. Jeremy, uh, this is just like the second one that I did. I have a uh, tiny, tiny rotation towards loosening on uh, uh, on the main end of cell. I mean, it's still Fox 7, just rotated maybe one sixteenth of a turn. Okay, that's good, Luca.
and the tube is all the way in. Um, I still I have uh, one in front of me. I think corresponds to the same position. It does. Delta one is good. Okay, so I'm gonna go start working. Uh, okay. With eyes on the tape. Yep. I'm uh, gonna go towards Delta one. Okay. Good word, Zuka. We cannot see the tape, so it's all you. You're gonna have to watch it yourself. I have the tape in front of me, and as I start the motion, as I start timing, I see no motion on the tape. And I'm looking for Echo One, is that what I said? Delta one. Delta one, okay. Delta one or echo eight. Luca, how far was the tape from the end of the VLI handle? I missed it. One quarter of an inch, and I still have one quarter of an inch. I have delta one, and I'm ready for the tool test. Okay, good work. And I have a, and I have a good full test. All right, okay. you can tighten the VLI. I need to tighten the cap. Zero. Drew, what about you? Are you ready to put down that hook A? Okay, down. Um, okay, once hook A is down, then you can remove the long so wire I'm tie. Just getting the. to the wire tie. And Luca just Luca just call it the okay. cap cycle we could see. It. This I cap cycle and good and VLI as fast as they can. So delta one equal eight. Closing the air fendle. Done Luca. All right. I'm going for the MLI. Okay, and do you want to take a quick photo of that one, Luca? Eight for eight. Great work. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me give you a uh, GoPro. Say again, Drew. I was going to hand him my GoPro. Yeah. Do you see it? Uh, where's that red going? All the way down. Down where? It's, uh, on, it's on your... Uh, then it's now caught on your uh, waist setter. My waist setter. Look towards your feet, towards your thigh. Ah, it's the velcro. The velcro caught on your uh, on your leg. On my leg. Right there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the velcro, the bracket. Okay. If you can, you will. Did. It's a light, just a one. Okay, Drew, here comes your camera. Okay, shoot a bunch of stills too while I get situated with this. Yes, put it to work. Before you do the stills, yeah. Luca, you might as well finish up the MLI. What's key here is, uh, in addition to using the MLI on the AAFs, is to try and tuck the previous MLI you opened up last DVA just to make sure that none of the mylar is exposed. And there's two, you remember there were two Velcro tabs on that MLI? You can try to use those. Ideally, they would be Velcro yeah, back yeah, together. I, I will. I'll oh, try. Okay, now to do this a little e more easily, I probably want to give back the tools so that I have a little bit more accessibility. 
Zeus, you can take that to 7 8. And also the. Ground IV, uh, Jeremy Hansen spending a significant amount of time training uh, in spacesuits on the ground, performing some of the tasks that uh, Luca Parmitano and Andrew Morgan are undergoing right now, understands the delicate procedures, uh, just making sure that all the different components are covered by the different blankets. Those are the MLI, multi-layer insulations. This includes the tubes themselves covering the uh, alternate fittings that are uh, ultimately connecting those tubes to the new pump system, and then the cover themselves. You. Pick three. Got it. Okay, now I'm going to reposition the tube so I can try and close that MLI. And if it helps, Luca, Drew can pull those tubes back. On your black back, Luca. No, it's uh, it's gonna be as covered as it's gonna get. Do you guys have uh, you know, WBS? Yeah, it looks pretty good, Luca. So next thing for you, Luca, is to work the the Nader blanket with Drew's help. Hey, we for accounting that long tie and the that was associated with it are going on the lid in the green bag. The lid of the green bag, that's a red in the water tie. I know we had a specific place for it, but that's best for it for now. Okay, that's great. K is down, and I'm handing off hook B here. I think Luca, the suit, hook B goes on. Yeah, hook B is for you, Drew. Yeah, Ideally, you're going to get that one. And then Luca can uh, do hook C. And just a reminder while we're in here, just do watch for the that sensitive that point. Strap? Andrew Morgan and Luca Parmitano working on one of the get-ahead tasks, installing a blanket on the very bottom or the nadir side. This is the earth-facing side of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. All the tasks, the primary tasks for today have been complete. Installing the pump, connecting and swaging all of the tubes, including the tubes on the very bottom where they are now, accessing the nadir worksite, the bottom worksite, and uh, swaging or connecting those last two tubes at the bottom all checked out. Now this next part will be installing this blanket. This is one of the get-ahead tasks for today, now just four hours, 40 minutes into today's spacewalk. The cleanup activities, though, will take a, some time to, to get ready to go into the hatch. This includes uh, uh, getting Luca Parmitano back to the hatch via the Canon Arm 2 and cleaning up all the different parts of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. The next spacewalk will be dedicated to leak checks for all of the tubes that have thus far been connected, all eight of them. And uh, cleaning up the alpha magnetic spectrometer itself, powering up and beginning to collect data once again. About um, one meter to my right. Well, your uh, ingress day toward you. See that, Luca? And last time it was almost a meter and a half from where you are now. Do you want to just start with one meter? Uh, no, I thought that it was a meter. But if it's a meter and a half, whatever I drove you last time, that's what I need to do. Okay, I'll take you to that position, and you can call the stop early if you need it. 
Stand by on that movement, Jeff. I just want to see. So we're good with that amount of loop protruding. Is that, I mean, we want to make sure that the MLI is going to cover that. Yeah, I'm not sure what the question is, Drew. It looks pretty good from the WVS we see. I'm talking to Luke. Talking to Luke. Yep. Okay. All right, Jess, you go. Over to you. Okay, starting motion to your right. Motion. I'll be continuing. Jeremy, while we're doing oh, the right. Continue motion. Copy. Twenty five centimeters to go. Continue. Okay, Luca, this is that right position. How does that look? Very tight. Again, Luca? It's NGCA. Copy, GCA complete. Is it all right? Yeah, I found, I found the strut. It's uh, making the hook go behind it. All right. Just watch your WBS uh, there, uh, Luca. Worked. Okay, looks like Nader blanket is complete. I can take a closeout photo of uh, of that side if you can get it, Luca, and then uh, I think we're ready to start sending you home. I confirm we're not going to pull the mask up today. Say again, Luca. What about the mask up? Checking. Could you, could you give me some light on that end? Yeah. And uh, Jeremy, the next thing I was going to tell you is that at one point I noticed that my light, helmet light was touching one of the UMA cables. I don't know if you guys have an easy, quick way to check that there was no, uh, there is no issue, but I just wanted to let you guys know. Okay, check him, Luca. And I can see that the close looks fine. Okay, so big picture, Drew and Luca, we are uh, we're in good shape here. We got everything done that we we plan to get done, and then some. So at this point, we're going to be heading back so we can clean up the arm and get back inside. There's nothing we need to do with the mud flap that adds uh, value to today's uh, spacewalk. So I think we're we're all good there. The only question remaining is whether Drew needs any help from Luca getting uh, stuff in the bag or if he needs Luca to take anything back before we, we start you back to ESP2. I'm, happy. I'm glad to help. Um, I mean, we can, at this point, the best thing would be to make sure that Luca has plenty of time to get the arm figure. I'm sure I can get this all in there. It'll take a, just a little bit of, it'll take a little time, but we'll get it all in. 
you are the bag master, and we have plenty of pad. We could probably make two trips. So uh, with that, uh, Drew, you can uh, start tidying up, and we'll give Luca the comm to get himself heading back to the airlock. And then. Okay, and we. I just want to say I got uh, eyes on the UMA cable now uh, that Luca was talking about, and I mean they look look exactly like they did. They look fine, and the levers are forward and. And things that look great. I took some uh, quick GoPro of it too, just so we can be sure. Okay, and Luca, you were asking about AMS health. And sure, uh, before you get busy good. with bags. Wonderful. Glad to hear that. Okay, guys, so the first thing we're going to do, and Drew, before you get busy with bags, we're going to take out the pitch, so we're going to pitch Luca back, and then we will take him back to the left. Okay, copy. Luca, uh, uh, ingress aid towards you, and that will clear your cutter away from the radiator. Are good? Okay, here comes the pitch motion. Okay, that's good motion and the clearances are good. Copy. Stop motion. Stopping. Okay. How much further are we going in that direction? We have eight more degrees. And you're pitching forward. Negative, pitching back. Okay. Okay, continue. Okay, continuing. Hey, Luca, pull on the ingress aid a little further. That's great. So a quick recap of what's been discussed and performed so far. Luca Parmitano and Andrew Morgan way ahead of the timeline. Clean cutting and swaging all eight tubes. Getting a get ahead task out of the way, installing the blanket on the bottom or the earth facing side of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Now beginning some of the cleanup activities. Working with uh, Jessica Mir inside the International Space Station, working the robotic arm going to maneuver Luca Parmitano, who's currently positioned at the end of the robotic arm, back over to the work site to uh, exit from the foot restraint, currently holding him in, and uh, get back into the hatch. In the meantime, Andrew Morgan going to clean up the work site, get all his tools back in the bag, and uh, head back over to the work site. Four hours, 50 minutes into today's spacewalk, all major tasks and a get-ahead task complete, now going through the cleanup activities. Our settings here, and then we're going to do a manual maneuver. Okay. Okay, Luca, we are going to start this motion. It's going to be taking you about 1.5 meters station aft. Okay, copy. Okay, starting motion. Back. And your good motion, good clearance. Okay, getting better. This is getting better and better. Yep.
good clearance. Jessica is well clear of the work site. Okay, thanks, Joe. Okay, Luca, now we're going to be bringing you Station Zenith. Copy. All right, Drew, I'll see you back at the USPS above. Yep. Okay, starting motion. It's actually Station Nader, but it's a short movement now. Okay, Nader. Okay, Luca, we are going to now load a JoeCast. Yeah. Okay, Drew, uh, where do you want to pick up? How about crew lock bag three? Yeah, <clears throat> um, I'm going to tell you that well, there are eight caps and eight plugs here, and I can see the two cutting guides, next to buy an adjustable. And um, got a large small on the outside and a small small. Six adjustables on the cap keeper. Okay, that sounds like a good deal. Am I missing anything? No, I don't think you are. I'll get a double check from the ground team. Okay, Drew, it's a good inventory. You can close up bag three. I need a glove and half check from both you and Luca when you can. Okay. So Joe says from Luca's glove. I have. Luca starting Joe cast 3.5 minutes. Gloves look great, pristine. I don't see anything, and the half is dry. Okay, copy, Drew. All right, uh, next I've got trash bag to crew lock bag four. But you can call this stuff out in any order you want to do it. Yeah, I'm going to um, just start working my way back to the bag. Uh, I stand by, I gotta reposition the HFR.
Luca, that's position hold. We're going to load the next show cast. Perfect. Nearly five hours into today's spacewalk, you're getting a view of Luca Parmitano at the end of the station's robotic arm. Jessica Mir at the controls of the arm, maneuvering it slowly but surely back to ESP2. This is where uh, Luca Parmitano originally entered into the foot restraint at the end of the robotic arm. The same position uh, will be used for exiting the station's robotic arm. All activities today have been completed, even a little bit ahead of schedule. All eight of the tubes were uh, clean cut and swaged or connected to the new pump unit that was installed onto the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. They even got a get-ahead task out of the way, installing a blanket underneath the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Okay, we do not Im need an inventory on that one if you didn't open it. Copy, thanks. Next one will inventory will be crew act back four if you are ready for that. Go for it. Okay, on the exterior of crew act back four, I have two wire ties. I've got a large, small. I now have the trash bag from the Nader uh, in case handrail with its associated small, small red. That's in a crew lock bag. Copy. To an integral, I have a cap keeper with the four caps. Wait a minute, I'm counting three, yeah, four caps. And then to an integral, I have the wire tie caddy with all of its wires and never used one out of there today. Okay, good config on crew lock bag four, Drew. And just so the two of you know, we're probably going to have a uh, long KU outage here, but we'll have you on space to ground one. Another handover of satellite communication, the tracking and data relay satellites that are positioned in geosynchronous orbit around the Earth, providing video and audio communications from the International Space Station. We'll keep uh, maintaining those audio communications, but as noted from Ground IV Jeremy Hansen, this will be one of the longer outages for video from the International Space Station. Expected about uh, between 20 and 30 minutes. In the meantime, uh, Luca Parmitano still making his way over to uh, exit from the foot restraint that's currently holding him in. We may be regaining uh, video communications in and out throughout that time, but it will be a longer outage. Well, we transfer red. I thought uh, maybe that that one goes into uh, the lid of the red bag, but remind me. Getting some video from the station as uh, the space station itself passes 268 statute miles, entering into an orbital sunrise just off the uh, southeastern border of Australia. Only if you remember, we'll find it. Uh, in the Sorry, an extra cast three minutes. Now, at the time uh, that I handed off to, to uh, Luca, it stayed with the bag because we used this PGT rip that as the second rip for the GoPro. So starting the next joke has three minutes in course. Does that work, Weed, or do you uh, dig further? 
Yeah, it's just I'm not sure what you're telling me is if is there a red it's supposed to be an extra red in crew lock bag four from the GoPro or did it end up somewhere else? Did it end up with the PGT instead? Uh, uh, negative. I'm going to just confirm that it is in crew lock back four. That is where I believe uh, that I left it, but let me check. I remember put you put me back. Or actually leaving it there. Yeah. Okay, I see it. There's an empty, small, small red um, on the same side as the wire tie caddy and crew lock back four. That's the one that went out with it and never went to Luca. Yep, okay. That makes sense. Associated that makes with sense. the GoPro. Yep, okay. Mystery solved. As Parmitano makes his way by robotic arm back to... Uh, the external platform near the airlock so he can exit from the foot restraint. Andrew Morgan doing an inventory check because he was the master of all the uh, tools and equipment brought out to the work site for uh, Luca Parmitano to access okay, go ahead. from his uh, great vantage point at the end of the robotic arm. This is part of the cleanup activities. Uh, both spacewalkers completed all of their primary tasks. Now just cleaning up from the work site and uh, preparing to uh, enter back into the uh, quest airlock for repressurization and to complete today's spacewalk. Clean cutter, both, the, both those items uh, read it to their respective reds. The seven eight, the uh, empty integral rock cutter uh, to its tether point. We have one, two, three, four, five remaining pieces of tape. Okay, Drew, and can you just verify the head is closed on the clean cutter? Okay, Luca, position hold, and... Okay, Luca, position hold, loading the next show cast. Okay. The head is uh, closed. Okay, it's good inventory. Okay, I'm gonna put that on because it's the one I grabbed, hook three in the red bag. And then uh, I'll give you a red bag uh, inventory, and we'll close it up. On the lid is the uh, uh, strike that we go back to the beginning here. The exterior of the red bag is uh, two large, small adjustables and a large, small red. Large, small red, I know we'll need to go to the interior and uh, I'll take a reminder before I leave, and I'll uh, verify when I uh, put that inside the bag. Inside the bag, that small, small, uh, that is the transfer red on the lid. Luca, starting next, Joe cast 3.5 minutes. Copy. Got to have a fish stringer, and on the fish stringer is the uh, inventory tool board and inspection mirror. I'm stowed in the red bag lid right now is the AF blanket and Okay, Drew, I'm back with you. I missed that. The last thing you were talking about was what was on the lid. Um, wh what parts of the red bag inventory are missing, I guess, is a better... So we're expecting one more ret uh, on the fish stringer. Okay, two small, small rets that are empty. Two small, small rets that are empty on the, in the red bag? 
a perm. One's a transfer rep, and then one was just a small, small on the fish stringer. Okay, the um, the transfer ret is on the lid of the red bag. Um, but was the because I don't have another small small on the fish stringer in the red bag. What was that associated with? So it was the Nader tube clip. It was on the lid of the bag previously. Okay, I just so I just transferred the MLI blanket, um, or excuse me, the AAF blanket uh, over to the green bag on that red. Okay, that works. Red bag's good. Other than uh, moving the large small rat inside, you can close it up. Five hours, nine minutes into today's spacewalk, in the middle of a handover of some of the video communications from the International Space Station. This is one of the longer ones, expected about 10 more minutes before we start acquiring views again. In the meantime, Andrew Morgan continuing to go through his inventory. He brought all the tools out to the worksite and uh, aided Luca Pomitano, who had access to all the right connections and tubes for all of the activities today. Just making sure everything's in order before he heads back to the Quest airlock for uh, entering back into the space station. Luca Parmitano. In the meantime, uh, being guided by the robotic arm, uh, Jessica Mir at the controls of the robotic arm inside the International Space Station, guiding him back uh, so that he can exit from his foot restraint and go back into the Quest airlock and complete their tasks for today. As we wait for uh, some of the video to come back from the International Space Station, please keep sending in questions using the hashtag AskNASA. We'll try to answer as many as we can. Okay, uh, we, for the green bag, I think every crew lock bag on the inside is inventoried, so we can go inventory green bag now. Okay, go ahead. Andrew Morgan continuing to uh, work through his inventory. In the meantime, uh, please use hashtag AskNASA for questions. This one comes from Kate. Will there be a total of four spacewalks as planned, or are there going to be more added to the series to complete to make sure the unit is fully functional again? Now, the uh, new pump box has been installed. Checkouts of the power were underway, and everything's looking good for the new box and the alpha magnetic spectrometer. They still need to... Uh, uh, boot up the uh, alpha magnetic spectrometer, but first they need to complete one more spacewalk, and that's to uh, check some of the the tubes that they connected, ensure there's no leaks, that uh, each of the tubes that were swaged uh, were properly connected, and that there's no additional leaks. Now, coming up here soon, we have a launch of a cargo vehicle, uh, a SpaceX CRS-19, the Dragon vehicle, bringing up a uh, more science and cargo to the International Space Station. Some of the science is critical, and we'll be launching here uh, Wednesday, December 4th, for a launch at 12.51 p.m. Eastern, 11.51 a.m. Central. Okay. That's all good, Drew. That will be uh, launching cargo to the International Space Station, more than 5,700 pounds worth. On the outside, uh, once the uh, cargo vehicle successfully arrives to the International Space Station contain, uh, containing time-sensitive and critical cargo. The space station program will assess a future date for the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer spacewalk to wrap up the procedures, check those leaks, and power the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer up. In the meantime, the uh, Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer will remain in a dormant state, uh, completely safe and uh, uh, ready for those leak checks. Then once they're performed and uh, 
all the scientists and engineers can confirm that uh, the spacewalks and swaging techniques and the new pump box all are operating nominally. They'll power the alpha magnetic spectrometer on so it can continue to collect great science, analyzing billions of particles and looking for the origins of the universe. Okay, Drew, looks like I'm back with you. Yeah, the wire, there's a long wire tie and a uh, ret on the lid as well. Sorry, I missed that. Okay, and the other thing was the, uh, the adjustable that was on the PGT. Did Luke end up using that or, uh, for his uh, fair lead at ESPQ? Uh, negative. Uh, neg uh, he, he used, a, used one, but there, there is still an adjustable on the handle of the PGT. Okay, PGT you has a... I didn't know you use an adjustable. Okay, all right, so we got the adjustable 7, 716 socket and the PGT. That's a good inventory. You can wrap that one up. It's all going to fit. Cleanup activities still underway as we await for uh, regaining that video communication from the space station. Comes the last Joe cast, 1.5 minutes. The arm still maneuvering uh, Luca Parmitano back uh, to the external platform near the airlock so that uh, Parmitano can exit from the foot restraint currently holding him to the cannon arm too. While we wait for some of those video communications to come back, keep sending in questions using the hashtag AskNASA. So a reminder, Drew, on the red bag, when you get back to it, we need the straps to the lower tether points. And we still got to pick up the large, small ret on that red bag. And then you're bringing the green bag back with you. Roger. You'll hear uh, ret being uh, used quite a bit for the inventory that Andrew Morgan is currently undergoing. That's a retractable equipment tether. It was used very frequently throughout today's activities to make sure that all of the components that were being worked on by the two spacewalking astronauts were secured by a tether, a cable basically connecting each of these components to the astronauts themselves, making sure nothing's floating away. While Morgan continues to go through the inventory and Parmitano is navigated back to the uh, external platform just near the Quest airlock, keep sending in those questions. This next one comes from Linda. Linda is asking how fast the electric arm moves the astronauts. This is in reference to the cannon arm too. This is from Mrs. Purnell's uh, fourth grade class. A very good question. Uh, the robot, the uh, robotic arm, this cannon arm too, moves does move very slowly, and that is for a very specific purpose. Uh, the slower, the better. That really is the technique. Uh, moving too fast may cause unnecessary additional movements, something called oscillation of the arm. It means if you were to move and then suddenly stop, the arm itself would shake. Now that would put the astronaut and some of the structure of the International Space Station in danger. So the slower the better. We're, ready. We're going to bring you to the ESP2 egress position. That's going to bring you station aft toward ESP2 about 1.5 meters. Coffee. I'm ready. And Jessica, okay, starting motion. Just one more thing. And this would explain the uh, incremental movements as well by Jessica Mir. Sure moving Luca Parmitano back over to that external platform. Over to you, Jessica. Okay, Luca, starting motion. Good motion. Be continuing.
You're getting a look at the inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas. Teams here are of the Orbit 2 team, led by Flight Director Emily Nelson. She's overseeing all of the teams looking after the systems of the International Space Station. You're hearing Jessica Meir on board the International Space Station, but you also might be hearing Jeremy Hansen. Two spaces over from em uh, Emily Nelson. Jeremy Hansen, uh, Canadian Space Agency astronaut, has spent a significant amount of time in some of the uh, training and mock-ups for the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer spacewalks. He himself suiting up on some of the ground units and training for these intricate procedures, uh, able to guide the two spacewalking astronauts through some of the finer details of what it takes to successfully conduct these maneuvers. And uh, successfully so, as all of the primary tasks, as well as a get-ahead task, have been completed for today. Today being one of the more complicated spacewalks of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer Repair. Next to Hansen, now uh, Ricky Arnold, the Capcom for today, communicating with the astronauts on the inside of the International Space Station. Okay, Luca. So for you, um, you can basically start cleanup of the arm at this point and your tether swap. And uh, since Drew's not back yet, you can probably plan on just uh, translating both up and down to see the spur. Okay, so confirmed that I'm going to clean up the arm, meaning I'm going to deconfigure it, uh, take first DPSR, then store it somewhere, and then take the research sender. Yeah, and they're both going back to the airlock. I don't know, you don't need to go up and down the CETA spur, obviously. That was the previous EVA, you're at ESP2. Right, so can I translate with both the APSR attached to the WIST extender, or is that not possible? What I understand, Luca, is that uh, you're allowed to do it, but people have said it's, it's hard to make the adjustments on the APFR uh, when it's on the end of the width extender, and you're going to need to reconfigure it for stowage. It's up to you, though, how you want to do it. Um, okay. Uh, so either way, I'm driving back. I'm doing double trips. Is that right? No, no, that's not right. You could. Um, you just need to reconfigure the APFR settings and the width extender settings before they get left in their stowage location on the airlock. So you could do that at the arm right now, you could do it down at the airlock, and you could translate with both of them together okay. on your BRT. It's personal preference. Okay. Yeah. Understood. I'm using that adjustable from my Fairlead to keep uh, red bag tacked down. Copy that, Drew. Regaining that uh, video communication from the International Space Station, you can see Luca Parmitano has been successfully navigated to that external platform. Okay. Has uh, exited from that foot restraint, holding him into the cannon arm too. Okay, you're doing your tether swap. And is uh, reconfiguring his tethers uh, to make sure his uh, journey back to the Quest airlock will be a safe one.
and we're five hours, 23 minutes in on this EVA. Looking good. Luca Parmitano, EV-1, lead spacewalker for today. The suit in the red stripes. Reconfiguring his tether as the International Space Station passes 262 statue miles over the South Pacific Ocean on a northeasterly course. Okay, copy that, Luca. Reels unlocked. The rear is unlocked. Now, in order to deconfigure the arm, I'm going to need to GCA it. Yeah, Luca, we were expecting that. We have another position to bring you for the APFR config, and it brings you back to where you started before. Basically, that brings you station a zenith a meter, and then brings you port a meter. Okay, uh, I think that you will not be fine with just a zenith motion for now. And then I will uh, let you know if I need any more. Okay, so stand by. I'm going to take the brakes off and get into mode. And Luca, so you just would like the zenith motion, or would you like that full meter? I'll guide you more if I need it. Okay, copy that. I will bring you one meter zenith. And Luca, can you clear the ingress bay that's behind you? The ingress bay? Stay firm. It may just be parallax, but we can see the ingress bay behind your back. Yes, the ingress bay behind my back. So I'm currently, uh, my back is to the... Yeah, Luca, we, we've cleared it now. We've cleared it with another camera view, so we're good. I'll continue motion. Jessica Mir at the uh, controls of the robotic arm, maneuvering that uh, ingress aid, the uh, portable foot restraint at the end of the robotic arm there, maneuvering in a, in a position so Luca Parmitano can retrieve his tether, currently attached to the cannon arm 2, where he has uh, been for the entire duration of today's spacewalk. Just uh, undoing that tether so he can make his way back to the airlock and complete today's spacewalk. Okay, another 1515 Zenith. 350. Zero. 50 zero Zenith, copy. That large, small rat is inside the red bag. The tether points are to the bottom tether points. Copy. There you go, Luca. Okay, GCA complete. Copy, GCA complete. So that will be all you'll need for today. I'll bring the brakes on. Brakes on. The brakes coming on. Okay, Luca. And the so brakes are on. You are go for APFR config. Luca, if you're going to do the all-in-one, then d you might want to consider reclocking the APFR and its settings out here first before you take it off or take the WIF extender off. Okay, I'm ready for. Uh, I'm going to jump on the off, and uh, then I'm, I'll be ready for uh, all the different comments. So, what 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 am I looking for on the APFR first? Okay, so it's three Quebec, Quebec, Fox three. 
Command. So, clocking of three. A firm. Clocking of three if you want to start with that. Don't forget to ret to it. Yeah, of course. Uh, copy. Uh, clocking three, Command. Sir. About stepping in your GTA there, Luca. Uh, Drew, did you say it's complete? So you got uh, all the comms you want. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I stepped, I stepped in there. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Um, so we have bed bag is here. Uh, everything's on the correct set of points. It's tech, uh, the two large smalls and a small small adjustable holding it in place. I'm looking back at the work site, and uh, everything looks. It looks good. I don't see it. We haven't left anything behind. APFR, it's the original configuration with the ingress aid folded over. Okay. Yeah, we watched you through that. We concur. It looks like everything's in a good config. You can start your transition back to the airlock. Remember the seat of car brakes. That's uh, good words from Andrew Morgan completing his task for checking the inventory of all the bags of tools and uh, tethers that he has uh, used throughout the duration of today's spacewalk. And over to the left of his camera view there, you can see the uh, foot restraint that he's been using. Uh, back in its original position, everything looking good there, and getting the okay to make his way back to the Quest airlock. In the meantime, uh, Luca Parmitano working at the end of the station's robotic arm to remove that foot restraint and get that uh, deconfigured from its uh, from its configuration for the Alpha Magnetics spectrometer repair spacewalks. Both spacewalkers are very much ahead of the te uh, timeline working through their primary procedures of uh, installing a new pump box. This is the new pump system that will provide cooling for the alpha magnetic spectrometer. And uh, swaging or connecting all of the tubes that have been cut prior to today's spacewalk, and getting it ready for uh, integration with the new pump system. Of course, one more spacewalk to go to check for leaks before the alpha magnetic spectrometer is powered back on. For now, it'll remain in a dormant state just to make sure that everything is safe to actually power it back on. The pump box itself, though, receiving power and everything looking good there. Okay, talking of three. Quebec, Quebec. Three, and then you Quebec, Quebec. Quebec, Quebec. Box. And just check the black on black good pull twist test. I got back on back good pull, good pull and good twist. Gabby. Making a pass by my APFR, it's black on black. All the settings. Six India India Kilo twelve. Copy, Drew.
Okay, and then just double check that pitch knob is locked, can can push it in. Yeah, I confirmed it's locked, pushed in. Copy. And then I have Foxtrot. Foxtrot 3. And I have MF3, yeah, already done. Okay, what about now? Uh, with extender. Okay, with extender is 10, alpha 1 is going to be the final config, so alpha 1 is what you're looking for. Okay, so all the way retracted. Okay, Luca, just do me a favor. We're confused about the comm. We heard about the knob on the APFR. You, were you saying it can be pushed in? You were confirming that it could be pushed in? Yes. The knob on the APFR is locked and pushed in. Okay, it should not be pushed in. It should be out and able to push in. It should spring back out. It's out and able to push in. Confirm. Okay. Confirm. Good words. All right. So Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I misunderstood it. So uh, back to Alpha 1 on the width extender, and then uh, you can pick that up, and we'll take it back to airlock width 11. All right. I have Alpha 1 on the width extender. And... I'm ready to pick it up after I retrieve my second safety pedal. Luca Parmitano continuing to work with that portable foot restraint to get it in a configuration where it can be properly stored. Final part will be to remove it from the cannon arm too. In the meantime, uh, Andrew Morgan completing his tasks and checking his inventory and putting back his foot restraint on his way back to the Quest airlock. The brakes on the seat occurred, uh, cart and heading back home. Yeah, Check them on that set up. Give it another. Okay, I have retrieved the APFR on the width extender. That was allowed. Doors are closed. And I'm starting my transmission back. Okay, Luca. And with that, the foot restraint removed from the cannon arm two. The task of the candid arm to maneuver Luca Parmitano into the right position for working with some of these intricate parts of the Alpha Magnex Magnetic Spectrometer Complete, stored on the uh, external platform there.
Parmentano getting a chance to uh, glance at the Earth below. 256 statute miles directly below is the northern border of Colombia. What's your position I'm above you on the cedar rail? You need nothing. I was just wondering. Yep, I'm about to come down the cedar cedar rail. Back. Oh, your to your right side. Look at me. Uh, A view from the helmet camera of Luca Parmitano. Helmet camera number 11, the translucent numbers at the bottom right of your screen. Rail coming down. In tow by Luca Parmitano is that portable foot restraint that's been attached uh, to the arm. He'll begin, he'll, he'll be again storing it or stowing it on the outside of the space station before he goes back into the Quest airlock. Long enough for you to get past like the, the toolboxes will be good. Coming into view is uh, Andrew Morgan with the bags of tools that he's been using and working with Luca Parmitano through the repair of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer today, making his way back to the Quest airlock as well. It's, uh it's probably just as good as Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic directly below Luca Parmitano at this time. Okay, let me put on his. On it. It's, um. Okay, it's, uh, yeah, it's at the. right across the toolbox. So. Okay, am I clear of it? Your head is clear of it. If you keep coming more and more forward, we're, we're going to be clear of each other. And then once you get on the wagon wheel, we'll be clear of each other. Yeah, I'm slowly going to make my way down there, but I'm still keeping it out of your way. I'm, I have an eye on it. I'm working on my fair leads. They're out of your way. All right, as you come up on whiff 11, Luca, it's clocking of 10. Yeah, whiff 11. Clocking of 10. Okay, copies. To local down. Okay, I'm right behind you. Yeah, I saw you. And Jeremy, can you give me the clocking for the double line? Uh, a firm. So it should be four, I think, Luca. Fucking go four on the double line, thank you.
Okay. The wheat beef um, bottles are out at four. Black on black. Good pull. Twist. Okay. And That's verify good. there is a ten on the single line. And before I leave, I'm gonna double check also that the APSR is good pull twist test on the suspenders. Okay, the whole structure is good pull, good twist. Parmitano attaching that portable foot restraint to the worksite interface just near the uh, Quest airlock. You're getting a view from the helmet camera of Andrew Morgan currently pulling at the thermal cover of the airlock. Both set to uh, enter back into the airlock here shortly. It's open. Okay, looks good, gentlemen. Luke, Drew, I see you heading inside with the green bag. Luca, you can follow him in. Give me one second to get situated so this bag is no way obtrusive. That's right, take all your time, man. Five hours, 46 minutes into today's spacewalk. Andrew Morgan back in the crew lock of the airlock. Parmitano will take up the rear. Once the repressurization of the airlock begins, that'll mark the official end of the spacewalk. We'll come back with statistics for what's been done so far aboard the International Space Station and this year. We just wanted a picture of you. Did you get any of those? No. I think plenty of pictures of him, but let me know if I can take any pictures of myself, so I'll do it. Okay. I, think, I think what he meant is that if you want to send us somewhere, Take a survey. I think we do that. Checking. All right. Otherwise, I've got the Arch for you bag in here, and it's on a red. In there, what? We are connected, Drew. Uh, we got to go ahead and connect my uh, SVU. Okay. Yeah, we're going to come inside. I just got to catch up with you guys on your safety um, tether config. I heard you were on the – your waist tether was good config, Drew. Luca, what's your config? I'm uh, attaching my waist tether, Drew's safety tether. Drew, you're go to connect your uh, SCU. Okay, copy. Okay, my, my right hand side weight setter is locked black on black on Drew's safety setter, which is also locked black on black. So I can remove my anchor. And. Whenever Drew is good for me to go in, I'll be able to go inside. 
Good for us, as long as Drew's is ready. I'm going to make a small adjustment to my ECV. I think I'm going to address the best. All right, Luca, I'm, uh, I'm ready for you to come in. We, my MCU is on a lot. Copy, Drew. I'm ready. Okay. Trying to position the bag kind of like the pump. Okay, hey, Andrew, just confirm your SCU is locked. That's on locked. Okay, Drew, I'm getting the key on the thermal cover. Okay. Andrew Morgan already inside the crew lock today. A view from the helmet camera of Luca Parmitano closing the thermal hatch and beginning the procedures for repressurization. You closing the thermal cover. Reminder about the Velcro strap, which I see you working. The thermal cover is closed with the doctor shot inside. Okay, next for you, Luca, is your SCU. Copy, SCU. Ready to work. is connected. Okay, confirm it's locked. Then you can take your water off. Yeah, it's locked, and the water is coming off. Hey, you be two water off. Okay, two minute timer. Luca, you can just verify the hatch is clear. Adjust my temperature. 
Okay. Good words, Luca. And that is the next note is TCP, TCV setting at 8 to max hold minimizes your time for cooling. Okay. And uh, yeah, the patch is clear. And now I need a little space to rotate. Do you think you can give me a little bit of clocking? Yeah, stand by. Which, yeah, yeah the usual clocking. Whatever you can give me. Okay. And uh, Jeremy, whenever you give me the go. Okay, Luca, we got another 40 seconds uh, before we can close the hatch. Five hours, 55 minutes into today's spacewalk. Luca Parmitano and Andrew Morgan inside the crew lock, working through their procedures to close the hatch and begin the repressurization process. Soon the two spacewalking astronauts will be speaking with uh, Christina Cook on the other side of the hatch who will guide them through the procedures for repressurization, which will mark the official end of today's spacewalk. Jeremy Hansen, the ground IV, in the meantime, carrying those two spacewalking astronauts through the final steps before handing over to Christina Cook on the inside. Drew, while he's working that, on the UIA, you can take oxygen, or you can check that oxygen EM1, EMU1 and 2 valves are open. Open both, EMU, uh, EMU1 and 2. Hatch closed, hatched, and locked. Copy. Drew, you can switch power EV1 and 2 on. Check LEDs and volts. Our EV1 on with a green LED, 18.6 volts. Our EV2 on, green LED, 18.6 volts. Okay, for both of you, switch power to SCU. Expect a warning tone. Yeah, EV1. I'll switch to SCU. EV2, SCU. Okay, gentlemen, then I'm going to hand you over to uh, Nana and take you the rest of the way back inside. You guys uh, have to say you made that look easy today. Really nice job. We're in a good uh, posture to get AMS up and running on the next EVA. And, uh, Jeremy, as the always say, uh, your speech flight is about technology, science, and exploration. I think that today, uh, with this EVA, we cannot put to practice the three of them. Uh, technology it, uh, was demonstrating the development not only of the pump, but also of the fact that we could install it and swage uh, tubes that we had cut um, specifically for this job. And that was, a, I think, a great technological demonstration. Uh, science, obviously, uh, to put all this work into restarting uh, AMS, the, the most important astrophysics experiment on the International Space Station, uh, and hopefully giving it many, many more years of, of science. And exploration, because science is exploration in this case. We are exploring the most, the hardest uh, and most unexplored part of the universe by proxy using science. So congratulations uh, to all those that worked uh, to achieve uh, these, uh, the CVAs and the point that we are at. And hopefully with the next CVA, we'll find out that all these work was to, to good use. Thank you so much to everybody. Thanks, Luca. Great word, words. The uh, team very much appreciates that.
Lucy and Drew, welcome back. Phenomenal job today. You guys crushed the timeline, and it was awesome watching you work. For both of you, you can take your O2 actuators to press. Okay. It worked. It worked. And I, I'm impressed that my ECM is blank. B. And so EV2 is impressed without the verification on the DCM. And Luca, what's your O2 actually status? Now that, now that it's equal to it, I'm impressed. Happy you're impressed. And Houston discussion. station on one for DCM. Okay, we're back with you on one. And can you just confirm the question? We're expecting that. We're expecting that config for where we are in the steps. Okay, copy. Okay, so to clarify, you are okay with Drew's DCM being blank, and his confirmation that he's impressed based on the location on his the front. I'm checking, Nana. Okay, that's a good config. Just make sure he's physically confirmed its location. We're handing over in 20 seconds. Be coming up on a handover. Luca, you can verify that the EV hatch end pep is closed. Close. And I'm gonna take the IV hatch equalization valve slightly open. As discussed, I will take initiation of any rate changes from you guys. Copy. In a short handover of video and audio communications from the International Space Station, should be regaining shortly. You can increase the rate. Not be increasing. I feel good, man. I just wanted to uh, confirm, though, I would normally be able to have a DPM display at this point. Yep, I concur as well. and. While we're repressing, we can clarify with the ground if you'd like. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fine. To, I'm certain that I'm impressed. I can I've jiggled it. I'm not getting any uh, purple tones. Uh, uh, clearly, the ECWS is still working because I did get a, a tone when I as I was making the O2 actuator movement to press, and I am impressed. I'm getting no audibles right now. Okay, I concur, and I can see your pressure gauge is a nominal pressure, about 4.3. Houston Station on two, we just wanted to double check with you. Typically, the DCM screen would not be blank at this time. We do think we're in a good config with Drew, but again, just looking for your words on uh, anything he can do or any feedback on the situation. Yep. So, Nana, we think your assessment is correct. We would normally expect to see it. We're wondering if his display is locked up. But we do see that we are in a good config. Yeah, and ground okay, telemetry is back and all of that up. Andrew, I'm assuming you copied as well. Yeah, I copy, and I'm comfortable if uh, they're comfortable. Okay, then I, we can increase the rate. Not be increasing. And I just want to clarify for all of you that we are making this assessment based on the data we're receiving on the ground. Okay, copy. The big thing is I just wanted 
the, uh, some additional confirmation that my O2 actuator is in the correct position, but uh, it sounds like we are, we're good, and uh, I'm pressure, uh, I feel fine, caught that cooling, uh, all's good. Um, the EMU, my, my, uh, I got 18.5 volts, and the uh, power switch is on position with the green LED. Okay, Drew, we concur with all that. We see a good con config. Hey, copy. And Luther, for you, since Drew normally had been reading out the pressures copy of the crew lock, if you could read out pressures at every one PSI okay. or so. Copy, we'll do that. And uh, what's the position of the, um, the, uh, the reaper? We're about 50% between off and norm. You can go a little faster. If Drew is okay. I'm okay. Happy increasing. Okay, we're at about 60% now. I'm showing about just over 1 PSI. I'm at 1% these moments. Say again, Luca? One PSI from my DCM. Peace. Now you can go about 75% form. 75? Yep. And that's about 75. Copy. Christina Cook guiding the two astronauts through the repressurization process underway confirmed a completion time of today's spacewalk at 11.33 a.m. Central Time. That puts the total elapsed time of today's spacewalk at six hours and two minutes. Copy that. Hey, you can go full, full norm. Copy, go into norm. I went ahead and just went to about 90%. Okay. Keep on seven. See? Okay. Right, three. You get Happy mind. three. For awareness, you should have an alert tone around 4.0. And at 5.0, We'll be pausing the refresh. Four point oh. Four point oh. And we are coming up on 5 PSI, I'll be causing the refresh. Copy. Copy. 5.0. Heavy hatch equalization valve is off. We're now waiting two minutes for the pressure to stabilize.
now in a holding period on the way up from uh, vacuum back to the pressure of the International Space Station at 14.7 PSI, holding at 5, just to check for any leaks before we go all the way up. In the meantime, we have some statistics from today's spacewalk, timing out at uh, 6 hours 2 minutes. This is the 224th in support of Space Station Assembly and Maintenance. It's the 11th spacewalk that's been conducted at the Space Station this year. Uh, the fifth for Parmitano, totaling 26 hours and 53 minutes in his career. For Morgan, this is his sixth spacewalk, totaling 39 hours and 2 minutes. Today's spacewalk lasted 6 hours and 2 minutes. That brings the uh, total spacewalking time through space station assembly and maintenance to 58 days, 15 hours, and 43 minutes of spacewalking time. Okay, that was our two minute stabilization. Now we're doing a one minute leak check. And this is our on us. We're just leak checking the crew lock itself, so no need to look at anything on your GCM. Copy. Copy. Still holding at five. PSI on the way up to uh, match or equalize with the pressure of the International Space Station at 14.7, still holding at 5. We'll do a correction to uh, some of the statistics. Here's the full slate. A correction to uh, the Morgan's total career spacewalking time at 39 hours, 32 minutes. That's uh, count factoring in today's six-hour, two-minute spacewalk starting at 5.31 a.m. Central and ending at 11.33 a.m. Central Time. At the time that the spacewalk ended at 11.33 a.m., the International Space Station was 263 miles over southern Ukraine. IV. Easy one, IV. You're both in IV, and I'm going to be taking the IV hatch equalization valve up to norm. Prepare for repress again. Ready. Ready. Christina Cook resuming the repressurization process. Repressurizing uh, on a normal rate now exceeding 6.3 PSI. She's the lead for the suit up and the repressurization activities for today. To her right, Jessica Meir, NASA astronaut, has been at the controls of the station's robotic arm through the duration of today's spacewalk at the end of which Luca Parmitano conducting the primary tasks of installing the new pump system and swaging or connecting the, tu the tubes that had been cut on a previous spacewalk, clean cutting them and swaging them or pinching them to the new, uh, to the new alternate fitting that allows it, the carbon dioxide to flow from the new pump system through the alpha magnetic spectrometer. The new pump system uh, checked out its power, everything looking good. The, spa the AMS itself, the Alpha Magnetic spectrometer, spectrometer, will be powered up after the last spacewalk. If I just went from about 95% to norm all the way to norm, let me know if that rate is not good. If it's too fast, I can take it back. Copy. Feels good. We've got 9.3. Yeah, and we're showing the same. Yep, just fucking 10 now.
11. Copy 11. And for your information, as we get close to uh, GPDT and zero, you can expect an alert then. Happy, and we see the same. Um, with that, we are going to be moving into post EVA and opening the hatch. Okay. Okay. Andrew, if you could just verify those bags are away from the hatch mechanism as well as your helmet. That's clear. Houston on one, uh, just a reminder for watches, et cetera, when handling the suits. Jessica Meir, assisted by Christina Cook, to her right, opening up the hatch. The pressure equalized between the crew lock, where the two spacewalking astronauts currently are waiting to be pulled into the equipment lock, where Christina Cook and Jessica Meir currently reside. They'll pull the astronauts in one at a time and start removing some of their equipment that they're wearing now, including the SAFER unit. This is a simplified aid for EVA rescue, provides propulsion in the unlikely event that the astronauts were to become untethered during today's spacewalk and they'll remove the uh, gloves and helmets from there. Houston Airlock on one, thank you for that. We took care of it, and can you confirm you are putting step four in work? And you have a go, and uh, step four is in work on it. Your report on when that's done and the crew isn't hot mic anymore. And the crew reported no glove contamination, so we're moving into step seven. Copy all. Andrew Morgan, the first one being pulled into the equipment lock by Jessica Meir, wearing the suit with no stripes, EV2 for today. The primary duty of uh, handling all of the tools and equipment that needed to be brought over to the work site. 
the alpha magnetic spectrometer where Luca Parmitano at the end of the robotic arm was able to access some of the critical components today. Christina Cook on the left communicating with Andrew Morgan through the comm unit there. First things first, they need to remove that safer unit, simplified aid for EVA rescue. Now in a short handover period for communications from the space station, video and audio should be regaining both very shortly. In the meantime, uh, Jessica Meir and uh, Christina Cook will continue to assist the spacewalking duo to remove their suits after getting uh, Andrew Morgan into position, they'll pull Luca Parmitano from the crew lock where he currently resides. Do the same thing, remove the uh, safer unit, which provides propulsion in the ev unlikely event that an astronaut were to become untethered. And then uh, get him situated in the crew lock to continue removing gloves and helmets. The two spacewalkers completed a six-hour, two-minute spacewalk today. The primary task was to install the new cooling pump system onto the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Really all the work that's been done so far was to prepare the alpha magnetic spectrometer for the work being done today. The first spacewalk in this series of repair spacewalks for the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer uh, being all about access. Installing handrails and removing debris shields and the vertical support beam where all of the tubes were.
making sure that the uh, work site itself was ready to continue some of the more intricate work, much of which was done on the second spacewalk. This included uh, a rough cut of some of the tubes, pulling them out and marking them, and installing some of the equipment, routing some of the cables, getting ready to accept that uh, new pump box. And that work was all done today. The uh, new pump system called the UTTPS, the upgraded tracker thermal pump system. That pump system being carefully brought out to the work site, which had been prepared on the previous two spacewalks. A lot of intricate work to be done that was done during today's spacewalk. That included installing the new box, plugging in the power and data cables that were previously routed, and clean cutting the tubes that were previously rough cut, and then swaging them with an alternate fitting, essentially uh, connecting them to the new pump system's tubes, making sure that uh, carbon dioxide can flow freely throughout the system, and which is the primary cooling of the alpha magnet magnetic spectrometer. There's one more spacewalk left. The work is not yet done. During that spacewalk, the uh, same spacewalking duo will go out and uh, go back to those tubes that they just fitted with the alternate fitting to the new pump system. On that new fitting, is something called a visual leak indicator. One by one, they'll go and they'll inspect each of these uh, tube fittings and just make sure that the work that they did today was sufficient enough to turn the alpha magnetic spectrometer on with the cooling system and making sure all of that carbon dioxide is flowing as expected through with the new uh, pump system. The pump system itself was checked out from the ground powering on and verifying that the pump system itself is working just fine. The last step will be to uh, check those leaks and hey, Drew, clean up. You can't talk to us, but you can hear us. We're curious if your DCM is still locked up, if you wanted to cycle your display switch and give us a thumbs up or thumbs down if it's uh, working or not working. Okay, two thumbs down. DCM is still blank. Thanks, man. Christina Cook and Jessica Meir continuing to help the uh, two spacewalking astronauts get out of their suits. After the completion of today's spacewalk, timing out at six hours, two minutes. Again, one more spacewalk to go to uh, clean up the work site of the alpha magnetic spectrometer and check the leaks of the uh, carbon dioxide pumps. In the uh, meantime, the alpha magnetic spectrometer will remain dormant. The next upcoming activity for the International Space Station will be the launch of the SpaceX Dragon cargo vehicle, carrying more than 5,700 pounds of cargo and science to the International Space Station. Critical science that the uh, astronauts themselves will need to work on, set to launch uh, this Wednesday, December 4th, and arrive a few days later, December 7th, for the uh, crew to capture with the robotic arm and uh, birth to the nadir or earth phasing side of the Harmony module. After the uh, successful arrival of the uh, SpaceX cargo vehicle, the International Space Station program will determine the uh, appropriate date for that last uh, spacewalk to complete the activities of repairing the alpha magnetic spectrometer. In the meantime, the experiment will remain dormant 
in a safe configuration, but just want to make sure that those leaks uh, or those fittings have been through proper leak checks before turning the system on and starting to gather the data where the experiment itself will be collecting particles from around the cosmos, cosmic rays, antimatter, and other particles, analyzing them through the powerful magnet aboard for scientists on the ground to analyze and search for the origins of the universe. Parmentano doing a lot of intricate work with his hands today. Of course, carrying the uh, new pump system out to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer worksite via the robotic arm, situating himself in the foot restraint and carrying the 350 pound pump system out to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer for installation. Much of his work with his hands though was with the uh, tubes of course, after connecting the power and data cables to the new system, much of the work with his hands was used with some of the unique tools that were developed specifically for the repair of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Some of these tools included a clean cutting tool to allow a nice uniform cut to those uh, tubes and allow them to fit nicely with the alternate fitting, which uh, swaged the tools or sort of pinched them and joined them together with the pump system's cooling tubes. Very intricate and repetitive work what with uh, the clean cutting as well as the straightening of the tubes with a straightener that also provided a measure. Then using his fingers to tape the tubes at a very specific part of the straightener and that tape uh, let the let Parmitano know exactly how far to push that tube into the fitting. He had to do this eight times with the help of Morgan, who provided him the necessary tools, all of these different uh, components through each of these steps, giving him the tools and uh, the perspective. Throughout today's spacewalk, you may have heard many uh, glove and hap checks. Of course, the uh, gloves themselves already been removed. In Parmentano's left hand right now is the hap. That's the helmet absorption pad complete with the uh, communications unit he used throughout today's spacewalk. But that helmet absorption pad would be used uh, in the event that there were to be a leak inside the suit. That helmet absorption pan would uh, absorb some of the moisture. Put those regular checks to make sure that the gloves are not scuffed up too much and that the helmet absorption pad is dry relatively. One for Luca's multiple water connection to his LTVG. We have some evidence of water on the multiple water connector side on the tube that is closest to the top of his body. We approximate about like maybe 10 milliliters of water. We did get photos and we did dry it. Copy all, thanks for that. Uh, you're go to continue. Okay.
an airlock Houston on one while you're sitting there uh, looking at that. Uh, uh, do you uh, think it is a, a leak or are you thinking it's condensation? Or you don't know. I see Luca's response. I think that it had the signatures of being a leak because it was a kind of a singular um, blob of water that was located in one place. Okay, copy. That's uh, more helpful than Luca's sign language. language. Copy. Now, through the process of uh, Christina Cook and uh, Jessica Meir working to remove Luca Parmitano from the suit, inspecting what's called the LCVG. That's the liquid cooling and ventilation garment. Runs uh, water throughout Luca Parmitano's body and can be adjusted temperature-wise for uh, temperature control as air conditioning is not as effective in the vacuum of space or in the microgravity environment. Now because liquid water is running through that tube, regular inspection of the liquid cooling garment is needed and the crew are uh, to report any signs of water that may be coming through. They reported a small amount of water estimating about 10 milliliters. Houston airlock on one. I can report that we do not see a lot of condensation or water otherwise in the LTA or the hut, and we also didn't notice a whole lot on the LTVG behind where it, the apparent leak was on the multiple water connector. Great words. Thank you very much.
Luca Parmitano out of his EMU, his extravehicular mobility unit. Christina Cook and Jessica Meir working with uh, Andrew Morgan to remove his suit, and we'll do the same inspections. With the helmet off and the gloves off, we'll wrap up our coverage of today's spacewalk that timed out at six hours, two minutes, where Andrew Morgan and Luca Parmitano completed the installation of the new pump box, the pump system to the alpha magnetic spectrometer and swaged or connected all of the tubes uh, ready to start uh, flowing that carbon dioxide to the alpha magnetic spectrometer. A few things first before that happens. The uh, SpaceX Dragon is set to lift off from Florida uh, this Wednesday, December 4th, launching at 12.51 uh, p.m. Eastern, 11.51 a.m. Central, with 5,700 pounds of cargo aboard. It will arrive at the International Space Station uh, December 7th, this Saturday. Uh, Commander Luca Parmitano will grapple the Dragon with uh, Andrew Morgan acting as a backup. Uh, after the 5,700 pounds of cargo is installed at the nadir or earth-facing side of Harmony, the crew will access the uh, scientific experiments inside and conduct the critical time-sensitive experiments that are aboard Dragon. Upon the arrival of the SpaceX Dragon, the International Space Station program will assess the timing of the fourth spacewalk to, for the repair of the alpha magnetic spectrometer which is critical and uh, involves leak checks before the system itself is turned on to continue collecting data. We hope you stay tuned for some of our future coverage for the SpaceX Dragon and upcoming news for the fourth spacewalk of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer Repair. That'll wrap up our coverage. This is Mission Control Houston.